Hey everyone, this is the Geek Pan here, buddy guys, with Daikon Night, but specifically the Daikon Podcast with your host, myself, Geeky Panda 404, or just call me Panda, your tactical degenerate weeb, likes to play games, and with my co-host here, Time Enforcer Anubis, which I'll let him do the introduction. Gentlemen. Gentlemen. Hey. Gentlemen. Yes. <laughs> but this is episode nine, first episode of the new year. And first and foremost, uh, Daikon is a part... Well, actually, it's interesting because the Daikon is, of the Daikon Night or Daikon Podcast is actually uh, originally Daikon Radish. It's a specific vegetable, uh, you know, usually found in a lot of dishes in Japan and all that dandy stuff. And also, I believe, what is it? The Gainax specifically has like a thing for Daikon, basically. Yeah, so the uh, long story short, the people who started Gainax started out making animations by through they were chosen to host the Japan sci-fi convention. So, cause they were all massive sci-fi nerds. So they decided, Hey, let's do something special and let's make an, let's make an opening animation for this convention. Yep. So they made that and they, it was called Daikon three. Cause that's, that that's the name of the convention. It was Daikon oh, yeah. three. And then a few years later, they made the Daikon four animation. It's all a lot of the, if you watch Gainax anime, you'll see a lot of references to their old Daikon animations. Yeah. Um, with this, though, um, so for those who are wondering or coming in and tuning in, the Daikon podcast is dedicated to all things anime and gaming, including both some of the industry side, but also the community side of things. First and foremost, we do our introductions on what's going on. Then we get into a little bit of the news and then our main topic for tonight which is actually kind of an interesting topic here. Does does Steam really have a quote unquote monopoly on the PC gaming market? So we're going to talk about Steam. We're going to talk about other um, platforms out there like Epic Game Store and all that dandy stuff. And then after we're doing the board segment where we have a list of anime from tiers of was it F tier is the lowest one up to the uh, S plus tier. Now, granted, A tier anime is the one of the top tier best ones, but S plus tier is dedicated for being the best and changing the industry in some way, shape, or form. We do got a lot of things to talk about tonight, so let's get started in here. But first and foremost, Anubis, the Steam yes. Winter Sale is officially over. What games did you buy? Uh, I bought System Shock, the remake. Oh, shit. Okay. And uh, what was the other one? It was valkyrie of phantasm which is basically a toho game what okay how is that i was thinking about maybe jump pulling the trigger on it but i'm like eh, eh, eh. it it has a it has a complex gameplay style it's a lot like i uh, think zone of the enders oh with shit toho characters oh damn okay um for me i picked up i picked up a lot more games actually <laughs> okay so originally okay, i also picked up i also picked up a, a uh dlc for mech warrior 5 i believe oh hell yeah so when it comes to the steam sales i usually buy like all these games i want but now it's like i'm buying games but on the cheaper scale so if it's like ten dollars or less i'd be like hot fucking damn so i can actually tell you specifically what games i picked up and grab a pen and paper keep the list in mind Warhammer 40k, Dawn of War, Dark Crusade, Brutal Legends, uh, Batman Arkham Knight, Shemu 1 and 2, Saints Row the 3rd, Remastered, Heavy Rain, Sin Episodes Emergence, <gasps> Silent Hunter 3, Visceral Cleanup Detail, uh, The Evil Within 2, Control Ultimate Collection, <gasps> The Deadly, uh, Thief Deadly Shadows, Spore, Need for Speed Heat, Sonic Adventure 2, Peeping uh, Door Manager, <gasps> Hold on, there's more, <laughs> Warhammer 40k, Dark Tide, Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater, Master Collection version, Monster Hunter World, Iceborne DLC, don't worry, I'm not even stopping here, Ranch Simulator, Build Farm Hunt, A Bullet Girls Fantasia, Warhammer 40k, Space Marine Anniversary Edition, Detroit Become Human, Dead Space, the remake, also, Occupy Trip, Undead and Undress, uh, Dead or Alive 5, Last Round Full Game version, <sighs> and uh, bought a bunch of DLC for Ball Bullet Girls Fantasia. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't have Sonic Adventure 2. I I know, right? I, uh, I, I'm surprised I didn't have Sonic Adventure 2 on my Steam account. That's why I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to buy it just to have it in there. All that dandy stuff. And I, uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure... I, yeah, I own Sonic Adventure 2 on three platforms now. Jesus Christ. Also, I, Moogle. I, I have it on Dreamcast, I have it on Steam, and I have it on the uh, Xbox 360. Also, Moogle, great question. Are you The real question is, are you going to finish any of them? Yes, I will. You Some can of finish them. Sonic Adventure 2 in like 
a day. <laughs> uh, maybe, uh, a day and a half, maybe. Yeah, Aqua was supposed to have Akiva trip for the Switch. I do have it on the Switch, the uh, collector's edition as well. But um, with that, though, yeah, it's um, a lot of my Steam uh, games I've been buying during the sales have been like the cheaper side of things. Like stuff that's like some of these games I bought were under $10. Like they were like two to three bucks each. And I'm like, you know, what? I'm going to buy that. If they're two to three bucks each. And some of the games like Silent Hunter 3, I remember playing that back in the day. And I'm like, you know what? Let's play Silent Hunter 3 again just for shits and giggles. I never got the chance to play Thief or Spore. So I figure, hey, they're two to three bucks each. Why not? You know, let's try it out, basically. But um, but yeah, that's uh. Now that I think about it, that was a lot of games I picked up. <laughs> <laughs> you had like two games and DLC. I had a list and some DLC. But um, but yeah, no, I was looking at System Shock Three and stuff like that. I started playing Dark Time, having fun with it. Um, there are there are some games in here I will plan on playing, like um, uh, Detroit Become Human. I plan on streaming that on here, so. I figured it'd be a good, uh, pretty, pretty, pretty cool game to stream and all that, Danny. So, but yeah, but the Steam sales always a good chance to get in on the action, all that stuff. My logic is, if it's at least twenty percent off, I'll buy it. If it's only ten percent off, it has to be a really damn good fucking reason for me to buy something at ten percent off, like twenty percent minimum. And if it's like ninety percent off, it's basically yeah, that's a steal. <laughs> like, uh, the Need for Speed game was like ninety five percent off, and it was like at three dollars. So I'm like, um, yeah, I'm going to buy this. <laughs> also, we do have some key announcements that we uh, that we'll be making here for our convention run. I myself will be uh, I got I put in my time and I got approved. So I'm going to be going to PAX East 2024, which my press uh, media, uh, my content creator badge got approved for, which I'm really excited, which is happening in late March. And then also uh, this is literally the reunion tour here. I'm really excited to say this, but. Uh, we are going to be going back to Anime Boston 2024, which, by the fucking way, I am not, no lie, no joke, my first AB was 20, it was 2004. This is 20 years in the fucking making for me, so I, I'm going to do something really special for this convention. I'm really excited, I knew, but are you excited? Yes. Like, they, uh... This is my excited face. It doesn't look like it, but I'm, I'm stoked. You are literally the fucking Captain Holt of our group at this and point. I, I never smile. You Remember are literally one, the Captain Holt of our group. That, that, one, uh, that one photo we took with Davira and them when yeah! we were at the bar and fucking yeah. at, at, at Retro, and everyone's all smiling, and I'm like, do you think this is a fucking game? <laughs> You're literally Captain Holt of our group. Have you seen Brooklyn Nine-Nine? You know what no. I'm talking about? No. You would literally... I'm going to send you a video, and... You are literally reminding me of Cam Holt, basically. Yeah, like, he doesn't smile. He's, like, very, like... It's, like, very direct and all that dandy stuff, so... Do not smile. This is not a game. But, no, we're going to be going to Anime Boston. We got a lot of plans for it, I, especially with a video, so because my uh, my first AB was back in 2004, and this is 20 years later, I'm doing something very special for this. Like, um, the video... I will be recording a lot, and what I mean by this is... Last year, my PAX East video was 30 minutes long and a POV style experience. Expect the same thing and more. My my goal is to have, not recording wise, just have a fully edited render video at least 45 minutes to an hour long. So, yeah, that's um, that's basically gonna be that's basically gonna be my goal here is to have something like that happen. But yeah, Andre, yeah, rest in peace, dude. He was a really good fucking actor. Um, Andre Brower, really good actor. Uh, he he, it was surprising because he does a lot of serious roles, and Brooklyn Nine Nine was like one of, one of his like comedic roles he did, and he nailed it. Like he fucking nailed it. Ah, oh, God, hell, hell, <laughs> Ataki rise again. Listen, I'm a tactical degenerate weave. It's literally the name. I should put that on my business card. Should I put that on my business card? It depends on what events you're going to be handing that business uh, card oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah that's true i should just <laughs> i mean like i'll have two business cards the front facing business yeah, side yeah, yeah. And... <laughs> what i can invent some business cards like tactical degenerate we what the fuck is this <laughs> god damn so uh so yeah we'll be going to those two conventions uh we're going to be doing some pretty cool uh, things during that time but it's literally our group that have been going to these conventions back in the day we're now coming back all of us 
mostly all of us but i'm mostly. we're trying to we're trying to figure out who can go to it and stuff like that so if you are going to uh pax east or anime boston we'll be around well i'll be around for pax east but myself and anubis will be around for ab and yes. then which sucks because the sheraton hotel is like fully sold out like that bitch is sold out like hard like I haven't haven't gotten any updates on no i, I, I i've been checking rooms yet i've been checking it and literally the whole hotel is like sold out but we do have a hotel and i cannot wait because we do have some anime boston traditions including 100 wings yes we always have 100 wings at least one night variety style uh every time we arrive at boston we have to get uh burgers at the tasty burger and yes. our personal favorite is the chili mac burgers yes and uh f other than that uh our friend jamie is always sleeping by the door for some reason for some reason <laughs> and other than that you're well no, that's pretty much it, isn't it? It's time to make some new traditions. <laughs> okay, so with that here, let's get into the new segment here. First and foremost, there's not a lot of new segment for this uh, for this podcast episode, but I assure you in the uh, next episode, uh, which the podcast is bi-weekly, unless something happens, we'll have some more stuff. So first and foremost, news anchors slammed after telling Team Gamer who beat Tetris for the first time to go outside and touch grass. That's a dick fucking move. Yeah, I, yeah, like, yeah. so, for context's sake, a 13-year-old was streaming Tetris, and he's the first ever person to beat it, basically. And beforehand, the only ones who were able to beat it was AI. So having a 13-year-old taking the time and effort to actually beat this fucking game, the Nintendo version, mind you, old yeah. school one, it's fucking nuts. Crazy. Like, down in history, his his name and his stream will be, like, immortalized. But this, this is something people thought was impossible. Exactly. So, with that, so a news anchor on Sky News decided to cover, uh, was covering this, and she was making some interesting comments, including uh, to get some fresh air, and... Uh, as and quote, as a mother, I would uh, s just say, step away from the screen and go outside to get some fresh air. Beating Tetris is not a life goal. I mean, he's thirteen years fucking old here, and can you just let him enjoy his fucking moment and be be a kid? Panda, uh, I have a question. Sure. And semi serious because I don't want to get you in trouble. Hypothetically, if I were to call this news anchor a bitch, would that be allowed? No, I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm going to do that, but if hypothetically, I I did that. Would that be allowed on your podcast? I called her a bitch, so uh, that was a bitch. All move. right, all right. This, this bitch needs to shut the fuck up. All right. <laughs> but, well, okay. Here's here's my thing. Yeah, like it's the, like this kid at 13 years old did something that everybody that until now everybody agreed was impossible. Oh, yeah. not possible for a human being you l literally made history and this bitch wants to tell him to go outside i think she needs to go outside yeah you spend too much time as a news anchor you forgot you forgot shit that people actually care about this kid yeah. made history yeah God let God. him enjoy that and then he's and he's a kid. What are kids like? Kids. Yeah, he's, he's thirteen he's, years old. He's thirteen years old. He's, Let him have fun. You know, what like... he's supposed to do right now is be is play video games. <laughs> yeah. The like... fact that he's playing Tetris at all at all is a miracle. At, yeah. at thirteen years old in twenty twenty three, the fact that he's playing Tetris at all, like that, should be applauded. The fact that yeah. he's playing like yeah, literal classic game. Like he he's playing like actual games. Like it, this is the classic of classics, basically. Yes. Yeah. Like if he if he was like do some like world for world first shit in Fortnite, then that would be a celebration for about for about 15 seconds and then everyone goes on with their lives but this kid did something that everyone agreed was impossible yeah and he now did it he has proof that he did it and now this news anchor wants to wants to wants to like wants to denigrate him this this kid's already like he's already proved himself to be more of a value than this news hanker has, has proven to me now do note that after this uh after the news portion of this came out 
she, this news anchor, she's getting eviscerated online by everyone. And Good. I do mean everyone. And, and it kind of does also she, bring up, to, like... If you, you, you get what you asked for, and you get it because you asked for it. What, what, you, yeah. you, you, you think you're going you're gonna to shit talk a 13-year-old kid from, you, from the news station and think you're not going to get shit on online for it? it you, you might deserve what whatever you get if that's what you do if that's what you choose to do yeah like it's kind of like the thing like mainstream media still views like video games as like a fucking joke basically and it's like what the fuck you know like but, literally, you know I what i'm I, I i'd even dispute that it's it's really not even that mainstream media views games as a joke this woman views games as a joke and exactly. it doesn't understand that this kid made history yeah and like, it's, and you it's fucking shit on video games all you want. This kid made legitimately made history. Yeah, it's it, what's crazy is too. It's like because of this kid did this. Now it's like begs the question: like, what else can we do? You know, what else is we, possible? We, he, this kid literally move like achieved the bar and and raised it even more. Like, goddamn, like this kid got major legitimately, props. Legitimately, like, he legitimately moved the needle. Like you, what? what can like how many how many people really can can be said to have legitimately moved the needle like that yeah. to do something that people thought was impossible yeah it, this it, it's just so fucking stupid and i'm trying to yeah it's it's just it's, it's just like it's like jesus christ and the fact it's like go outside i'm like so if kids go outside and play and then you complain that they're outside and play the fuck come on this is I hate logic like this. You can't even fucking can't 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 please them. All that Danny stuff. Well, you you, you can't. You little, can't. Little word. Yeah, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. Yeah. So you might as well play video games. Attila might also well. noted that the, apparently the news stations also had a segment of a 16 year old darts champion, and he was being praised. No, uh, no other comments about him. Like so, it's like okay, the 16 year old playing darts won a championship, which again, darts is a lot of skill and effort there. Cool, cool in the gang, really awesome. But then, thirteen year old beats, does a f world record in Tetris, and it's like eviscerates. It's like Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, yeah, it's you, it's, you so, it's so fucking crazy. Reason. Yeah, it's so fucking crazy. Which leads us to our next news segment here: Best Buy, um, end of an era, basically. Uh, they, I believe, it's already started. If I'm not too sure. But they already that they are starting this year planning to stop selling physical media, including Blu-rays and DVDs, which brings up an interesting segment. I'm like, okay, if you're going to stop selling Blu-rays and DVDs, what else are you going to stop selling? Right. Which, I mean, okay, correct me if I'm wrong. When you walk into Best Buy, what's the first fucking see? What's the first fucking thing you usually see? Uh, first thing, other than the electronics, the local, yeah. At, I mean, at the local Best Buy, it's the first things the first things right in front of the uh the entrance are like the speakers and to the right side it's the the cell phones and shit shit you're right okay but after you get past that you see like the movie collection blu-rays dvds all that stuff like all this physical right. media and all that stuff like that which you think to yourself i'm like okay why do you stop selling these things you know like <laughs> well they're they don't seem to be moving yeah that's the thing it's like is are they moving product and if they're not moving product then yeah it kind of does make sense that they that they're gonna that they're gonna stop selling those things yeah yeah it's um yeah i'm reading this kotaku article here yeah i know kotaku right um but no this is where the article is from so in october 2023 best buys plans to phase out physical media sales a massive retailer later confirmed the news, like telling Associated Press, the way people watch movies and TV shows is much different than uh, much different today. Which is great because a lot of stuff oh, out there true. is it's literally worse. a lot. A lot of stuff out there is literally streaming. Literally, you stream like you stream your movies, your TV shows, all that kind stuff. Whether it be your PC, your game console, your fucking cell phone, all, all of it streamed now. Basically, yep. there's like, which kind of fucking sucks because it's like and ev everything is worse as a result. Yeah, like, I personally rather have, like, when it comes to movies and, and it, like, and DVDs and shit like that, like, let's say I really like to, let's say I watch this anime. I really like it a lot. Okay, 
I want to oh, I want to help support it. I want to own this basically. And then it's like, okay, um, where can I buy it? And then I realize, oh shit, I can't buy it. like Cyberpunk Edge Runners. I there's uh two at, at this time. I don't think there's been official Blu-ray or DVD release of it. And the show is so fucking good. I would immediately buy it in a fucking heartbeat. But there's nothing. You have to watch it on Netflix, basically. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> like, but like with other stuff, like I I'm perfectly fine buying all this stuff. I'm perfectly fine like having a collection in my house, basically. And some people are like, oh, it's great space. Like this is my collection. Fuck you. <laughs> you know. Well, it's like that. That's really the thing is you you you're fine having that collection yeah but what is the uh what is the company in charge of these uh these works and these properties think about them and that's where it becomes a problem yeah i mean it, it's just it just sucks because it's like the, we've already seen it starting to happen like there was a picture post on Twitter for someone and it's literally like the whole Blu-ray section got gutted. Like yep. it, it it's like a ghost town basically. And I understand you want and to I mean, put... the, here's here's the other part of it is who really is going to Best Buy to buy their DVDs. Yeah, usually yeah that's actually true. Not gonna lie to you because I usually, usually buy going for Best Buy for, for something else and maybe you might pick up a DVD while you're there. I've done that one time, maybe two times. Yeah, all the Blu-rays I've bought lately or uh, and DVDs, it's literally been Amazon or their respective online stores. Like if it was yep. like just recently, I literally just got two new Blu-rays of animes, both from Sentai Filmworks, direct because of a yep. holiday sale. Yep. Because I'm like, oh shit, I'll buy from this basically. It's and I also noticed too, like, you ever go to Walmart and you know you remember like their Blu-ray section was a bit bigger or their movie section was a little bit bigger? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, now it's like more condensed now. Like, holy shit! Yep. <laughs> it, it, it's kind of, uh, it's a little, I only go to Best Buy as well uh, as a oh a hail mary yeah hail mary move yeah I don't know now they haven't gone the way I don't know how they haven't gone the way of Circuit City yet. Wow, that's a Jesus Christ Circuit City. God damn, dude. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they'd gone the way to Circuit City, honestly, but uh, because. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I have not heard that name. It's like circuit. What, 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 what name are you gonna say next? Radio Shack. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. But yeah, no, you're not. You're not wrong here. It's like, to, to me personally, I like having physical media when it comes to movies and TV shows. I don't need to wait to download the episode or to stream it. I can immediately pop it in, start watching it at my convenience. Which all, which also, yeah, it's also on Netflix. They stopped sending out DVDs and Blu-rays now. They're yep. all they're they're fully streaming service. All Shit. the major all, all the major companies in the sector trying to do trying to do this digital thing, they're going to phase out streaming. They're they're going to phase out physical because why keep it around? Mm -hmm. Especially when you need to run an infrastructure at that level of scale. It it becomes like it, it becomes a vestigial part of your enterprise. Because yeah. how many people are buying physical dvds versus how much versus how much media is coming out nowadays like if if netflix tried to put everything all their original stuff on blu-ray how much money would that cost just putting all that stuff on blu-ray for people who are never going to watch this stuff again they'll watch the stuff they'll watch uh, any given thing on netflix one time maybe twice they're never going to revisit it they're going to move on to the next thing because that's what the that's what their infrastructure that's what all that's basically all of what netflix exists to do now that's what netflix encourages people to do so mm -hmm. you watch the thing you enjoy it move on to the next thing immediately they don't even let the credits roll on a lot of these things it no it's just starts, literally like starts, yeah. starts queuing up the next thing yeah uh, t uh, t uh tentacle honey blockbuster attila comp you jesus christ comp usa god damn what's the next thing you guys gonna post down Ho uh planet hollywood uh, EB Games. I'm sad. <laughs> God, which brings up an interesting moment. What about games? Like, if all this, if the physical media with movies and TV shows are starting to slowly pull back, what's gonna happen to the games? You know, 
which actually brings us into our main topic for today. Is 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 Steam quote unquote a monopoly on PC gaming? I mean, it's interesting. It's an interesting thing to think about and stuff like that. Like, as of right now, when it comes to console gaming, a lot of the, we there is still a good amount of physical sales going on, console games. But yeah, the, the digital front, amount. the digital front has been rising more and more. Especially now, you can preload it. There's sales and all that Danny stuff, so you don't even need to go to midnight releases, which they they were so fun. Those midnight releases were just so much energy and just the excitement and all that stuff. I do miss that. But uh, but now. When it comes to PC, though, we've literally stopped having physical media for, like, God knows how long. I think the last exception to the rule is Baldur's Gate 3, which they literally, like, yes, we've, there is a disc version with the game in, on the disc. Don't worry. It's on there. <laughs> There's, there, you need three qualifiers. There is, one, there is a disc version. Two, the, there is a disc in the box. <laughs> three, the game is on the disc. Yeah, like I remember Those when are the I, three things you need. I remember when I got like Black Ops, um, Black Ops Four. It was literally, it was literally like a paper disc with a CD code. Like, hey, download it on like that's so Battle.net. that's so jank. That's so <laughs> jank. And it ghetto. is. Like, but what are we doing? But uh, but then it, it does come to our argument of: Do you think Steam has a monopoly on PC gaming? So, in order to answer this question, we need to like, we need to understand what it is we're talking about when we say a monopoly, because mm. it because it, this is something that very easily gets like it's very easy to to get in the weeds about this, where like where we we're trying to define define terms the entire discussion so we need to figure out first and foremost what are we talking about when we say a company does or doesn't have a monopoly mm. well i'll let you you're, you're you're the one who knows more about the business side of things than than me so like but when i think of steam i think of like the one-stop shop that you see with for pc gaming sure yeah like so like walmart is a one-stop shop for a whole lot of things general goods but, and needs basically yeah, yeah you, you, would you call walmart a monopoly no because yeah you got, and, and, and you, you got, because and, and so like you you can get you can get the same stuff elsewhere yeah like that's the thing like steam i remember when steam first started first started 20 years ago yes it's 20 years ago my steam account is 20 years old it was literally a platform specifically only for Valve games. Specifically only for Valve games. The friends list didn't work. There was no, like, all that Danny stuff. It was very bare bones. Now it's got everything on there, basically. You can download not only Valve games, but you can buy games from different uh, publishers and all that Danny stuff. Indie games, AAA games. They de at, at one time, they had movies and shit on there, or TV shows, I believe. It was it was crazy. Um, And everyone's posting on their toy KB Toys, Toys R Us. Well, this is a new this is one who falls under how expertise when it comes to business. Yes, it is. Um, but yeah, it's it, like I've always viewed Steam as like a kind of like a one stop shop type thing, basically, because it literally had like everything you need, basically. But it wasn't a. I wouldn't really call it monopoly because it have, you know, uh, when you say monopoly, they have like every they, they have they specifically like no one else has it. So but with like also well, it, it's it's a little bit more complex than that. Yeah. So like when we when you talk about monopolies, you talk you're talking really about enterprises like Standard Oil back in the day. And mm -hmm. what they used to do what was they would basically buy up all of their competition and all of the all of the the companies that went into every level of manufacturing. So they basically controlled the entirety of that of ba all, that entire market sector, and not through the choice of the consumer, but through a series of hostile takeovers. Like that basic level, that's what that's what we're talking about when you're talking about a monopoly. Yeah. 
And, like, Steam is not the only player out there, basically. We've got other digital platforms, including GOG. Uh, we got the EA Play, I think that's what it's called now. I don't know. You Play, but, uh, but Epic Game Store, which Epic Game Store, they were coming in hot because they, they were saying how Steam was this corporation that had basically a hold on the PC gaming market, so they wanted to have an alternate of it. They, they, they wanted to be like, no, we're the better person here. We're going to do all these things. And they kind of pissed off a lot of PC gamers by doing stuff like exclusive, like having exclusive launches on their platform versus, you know, like, oh, you'll get it on Steam, but it's here first because we paid for the rights to have it launched on our platform first and all that any shit, which I right. fucking hate. So, like, so here's. So I and. Here's what we need to realize when we're talking about like we're talking about stuff like what Epic Game Store people are saying. Yeah. That's marketing. That's trying to portray Steam as this bit like Mr. Moneybags from the Monopoly game. They're this yeah. massive greedy corporation with the top hat and the cane, and all they're after is more control over the market ostensibly so they could start screwing the customer over where as far as the, as far as i've seen from steam the more control they've had over the market over time the less they've screwed the customer over yeah like in fact all... the better they've been for for customers you yeah, like one of the things about steam is like if you are a game developer or publisher you want to put a game on steam yeah steam takes a decent cut out of the profits basically for having another platform but at the same time they're using that they're using that money to make steam better for everyone like uh for instance uh they have also really... like if steam steam tape my my understanding is it's a 30 percent cut yeah steam is a 30 percent cut and um... and so that's that's the price of having your game on the the best most popular platform that exists today yeah so and they're using that money to like reinvest into steam to make it better like again like customer service uh one of the best like you don't like a game have you played it for under two hours okay put in a refund request you're gonna get it nine times out of ten basically That's something they didn't used to do but now currently do yeah there are some other stuff like specific like uh things that they say there will be no refunds then but they give you heads up warning like hey just a reminder you can't refund this if you buy it so they're they're giving you heads up but other games usually full games like, I've seen a video where, like, I beat this game in under two hours and I refunded it. I'm like, yeah, technically, yeah, yeah, yeah you can do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, you there... can do that. Yeah, you can do you that. Can yeah, do, like, yeah. And, you can, and a... so, like, if you're a game developer, you might see that as a, as a shitty thing that Steam has done, that, they've, that they're allowing consumers to do that. So you could make that, you could definitely make that argument. But from a consumer level, yeah, you're able. Yeah, that's something you're able to do. Well, it protects. You can us say that that's a... good or bad, but it. Well, there. I I would hesitate to say that allowing people to play a game to play and finish a game two hour for under two in under two hours and allowing people to refund that is is a consumer protection thing. That's not um, that's not about protecting the consumer. That's that's a side that's a side effect of something Steam has uh, of a decision Steam has made. Well, but it's not that's not con that isn't consumer protection. When and when people do that, yeah, I I would I would begin to agree with the argument that yeah, that's a shitty thing to do. But at the same time, if I was a game developer and if I was a game developer, I would create games that take more than two hours to to complete well, story we, mode. Well, we just had a game the day before that came out, and it wasn't what it was supposed to be. And literally, I don't even think it lasted a month. The servers are shutting down later this month, basically. And it's kind of like that. Yeah, no, everyone's getting their fucking money back. <laughs> like, yeah, every everyone's getting their fucking money back. Like, Jesus fucking Christ, that thing was a dumpster fire. Um, let's see. The best part is they asked Steam if they can do it, and their only response was, "If you can do it." 
Attila, I've been thinking about a true monopoly, and the only examples are with utilities, electric, electricity, and gas companies, where some states and even metros have one provider. Yeah, exactly. Like, so, yeah, is- so at, at the risk of getting too in the weeds, generally speaking, by my understanding, most of the time when you see a true monopoly, there's there's some sort of like there's some sort of government mandate in place that makes it so only de facto only one like only one company can provide a particular service to a particular yeah. area and it's so not like, like... It, it's the one there's one thing that was happening a while back with like uh internet service providers where a mm. lot of time yeah there's only one maybe two internet service providers in a particular area that that can provide service for that area and there's reasons for that yeah you might in, they might not be good reasons, but there's reasons for that. <laughs> and I, I just hate it because it's like Epic Games has been on this like the war the war path or the war march of, you know, Steam has a monopoly, but we're here to make things better. But at the same time, they're really not like they don't it's have pure as, marketing. Yeah, it's pure marketing. They don't have as much features or stuff as Steam. Like they literally at one point they didn't even have a fucking cart on the platform. Like Jesus fucking Christ, guys. Like, yeah, when. When you, when your service really isn't up to snuff, and you can't be, and you don't, you're not trying to compete on the quality of your service. You're trying to com, you're you're competing on basically just marketing. You're you're trying to market your way into success because your service isn't good enough your product is not good enough the thing you're providing does not meet the consumer's meet needs so you try to wrap a moral argument yeah. around why people should buy your product yeah like this is one thing i this is this is something i got speaking of monopolies this is something i got on crunchyroll about it's their whole trying to buy you're supporting the anime industry and the reason they focus on that so much, even when even when you you unsubscribe, it'll tell you about how Crunchyroll supports the anime industry, which tells me that all right, you're trying to wrap a moral argument around the purchase of your product, really because and what it comes down to is your product isn't good enough. Your product isn't good enough to buy on its own. Yeah, I I, I was reading a Reddit article of this game developer. It's like he stated that I'd rather pay the 30% cut to Valve to have my product on there than the cheaper route with Epic Game Store. Yeah. And his logic was there's more there's a lot more people using Steam. Like 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 Epic Game Store is like literally a small pond that's trying to say it's a big ocean. But Steam is basically a big ocean and it doesn't need to say anything. It's just it's just yeah, beers. Come, you know, just well. Steam doesn't. Steam doesn't need to. No, they create, don't. Uh, they don't need to. Uh, uh, yeah, they don't need to create a moral imperative around purchasing games off of Steam. And they don't need to have like exclusive. Like they don't because really their service to, is good. Yeah, they, they don't really need to have like an exclusive launch on Steam or something. I like it. Like like um, like EA had their own EA started like the Origin because they want to have their own digital platform exclusive platform. And then one thing after another, they eventually came back to Steam. And then they had this, but they still have their digital platform, which is now called EA Play, I believe. But it's kind of like, hey, you could either buy it now on Steam or you could buy it on their platform. Same thing with other platforms like you, like Ubisoft games now. You can buy it on Steam or you can buy it on their platform. It does, you know, whichever you prefer. Epic Games, you have to buy it on fucking Epic Games. No other place. I'm like, fuck. And really, <laughs> the only reason Epic Games can do that is because they have Fortnite. Yeah, the Fortnite money speaks. <laughs> Literally, it does they make a lot of money via Fortnite? I'm not even gonna fucking lie here. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it, it's just it it just annoys me that it's like and they they have to do all these things. Like, uh, I just read an article right now. They uh are confirming they're going to be doing more free games for 2024, and I'm like, okay, you're doing this just so people can like use your their platform. Yeah, you, you know you know what I do, which is really interesting here, like. The only reason why I have Epic Game Store is because of Fortnite. That's it. But you want to know? You know what yeah. I do with those free games? Add them to my library. Okay, and that's it. 
I don't play them. I don't even add them to my library. I, Adam, I, I, I honestly, I, I wouldn't know where to go in the Epic Games launcher to get to get those free games they're talking about. But but That's it's how like little attention I pay. But yeah, it's like it's just crazy. Like Steam does not really have a monopoly on things at all. Like it's it's the the it's the biggest one because Steam doesn't have a it. monopoly. They have a quality product. Yeah, like you know it works, and a lot yeah. of people use that product, and a lot and. A lot of people don't use the competing products yeah. because they're not that good. G I would argue GOG is the only one I would say that has like they that have can a, have I, any claim to have to to have a quality product on st approaching the level of Steam. And to a certain extent, they're trying to do something completely different. Well, yeah, like uh, well, with them is uh, they offer game, they offer niche games that are does not appear on Steam at all, um, and it's DRM free, like yes, yeah. like literally, that's like that's what kind of like about it. Like, GOG can exist in the same pool as Steam, because each offer their own unique things. Like, hey, I want to buy World in Conflict. The game is not available on Steam anymore, but it's available on uh, GOG. Yep. So it's it, like the, uh, like you can have all these other digital platforms that can coexist, and other and other digital platforms like Bethesda just burned down as it should be because it really did not need its own fucking digital platform. The was it the Bethesda launcher? Am I am I getting that right? It didn't need I've, to. Yeah, I. This must have slipped slipped my news feed because I have not heard about this at all. You never heard about the Bethesda launcher? Yeah, they no. had their own. No, uh, it wouldn't surprise me that they that they would try and start their own launcher. Yeah, they tried. But, yeah, they tried stewing it, and then they realized not many people are using it, so they're like we're closing it yep. down and moving everything back to Steam again. Yep. <laughs> that was like literally. So this, was... Is, this is what happens. This this is what happens all the time in emerging markets. Yep. You have one major and like get ready because this is going to happen to uh streaming services as well you have a whole lot of you have a basically one major player that is the first mover to the market yeah, or like you have a major early mover who defines the market so in in the case of in this case it's steam okay then what happens is people see that oh this is something that can be that can be quite lucrative and there's you don't have the overhead of having to produce a whole bunch of a whole bunch of boxes and discs and manuals and whatnot so they they, they discover that this is a more efficient way of doing business and so not perhaps not quite realizing what made the first like the first thing successful they they jump on board and try to do the exact same thing hmm. try to do the exact same thing that the first guy is doing with their own product because it the, a lot of the time and this is what happened with streaming services too because netflix was not uh not a producer they didn't produce media they just streamed it they licensed other media and streamed it so is what Steam's doing. They they sell other games. They, yeah. it to, and Steam did have the start with Valve, but we're way way past that paradigm now. And by the time you saw Origin and all that, we were way past that paradigm. Yeah. Like so people, EA and Activision Blizzard and Ubisoft, they all see ooh this this digital platform stuff is making steam a lot of money maybe we should replicate that with our own games and take our, and also take our games off of steam because why would we want to sell our games on steam when we're trying to make money with our own platform mm. and so they all they all start their own platform and most of them fail a because they don't understand the 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 like the success model behind steam yeah and b because there's too many of them and people don't want to keep track of all these launchers no uh, no it's like 
that's the one thing that's a pain in the ass fucking thing. Like I, I love having like kind of like a one stop shop type thing, but it's like when when publishers want to do their own digital platform, like guys, really come on, I gotta make another thing for this. I gotta, I need. If like, I oh, have to log in to UPlay one more goddamn time, one funny. more time, yeah, I have I to. I, after clicking the thing that says keep me logged in, if I have to log into UPlay to play to play Breakpoint, which is not like. That's not like a S tier game. No. So I like playing I like just idly playing breakpoint doing missions. I have to log in to you play one more time after clicking the remember me thing. Yeah. It's and I love it because publisher like those companies realize like, oh shit, we're not making enough sales on our own platform. Because again, it's like I remember when let's say um a game like Epic Games bought a game like you know what was it Hitman Three I believe and it was the first one to release on the it first released in the Epic Game Store like and then okay so they made some sales here and there and then eventually after a while it got released on Steam but Valve did it right like they like the, the, they all did it right where it got released on Steam it got patched up worked on DLC and it had a sale going on but like hey here you go. Play and enjoy. We can, we're here. We're a little late. Here's a discount. Here's yeah. all the stuff. We got things patched up. You're good to fucking go. You know, you're off to the fucking races and stuff like that. We just never underestimate the power of gamers who are willing to fucking wait. <laughs> don't, don't fuck. Yeah, with I can wait for Half Life. I'm still waiting for Half Life Three. You are, and I can wait. I am patient. <laughs> I am very, very fucking patient. So when you so when when I see a game that I I'm hyped up to release. And it said, and they released on the Epic Games Store first, and I'm like, I'll wait for Steam. Don't worry, I can hold out. And it usually comes to Steam, and there's usually a sale, and then okay, I'm happy. Yep. You need you need launch you need to launch you play for Uno. Yeah, I know that's so fucking stupid. Yeah, we will never get Half Life Three. Don't say that. Don't you ever say that. We will get Half Life Three. Hundred Badger. All competitive streaming platforms launch too prematurely, with little in terms of viewer interaction features. They need the same features as Switch to be competitive. Ex yeah. It's like because they started like because Steam started like so early, and now they're so advanced. Like any other comp comp potential competition that starts, it's like you can't compete. Well, Steam made the market. Yeah, they 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 they, they defined they, it they basically. Created, they, defined... they defined everything about how this market works. Yeah, I remember when like hey preloading, hey download Half Life Two before it releases, so when it hits midnight, you can play it immediately. We just need to download. A little, a uh, few more, like a patch file or two, and then you're off. You're good. You know, no need to wait for the ins. Download it. Wait for it to install. No, you're good. You're gone. Like console yeah, it, games did not have that feature yet. I think it was until two thousand and seven or eight that they started doing that. Or not even. Not even preloading. Yeah, not even preloading. They created everything about how this infrastructure, how, how this market, and how the infrastructure around it works. Yeah. It's it, and it's like again, it's like Epic Games wanting to compete with Steam. It's like you can't compete with Steam because they are just again so far ahead of you. You're still picking. You're still trying to add basic fucking features, but you know, it's like they don't understand how why Steam was successful, and they're they're trying to they're trying to replicate its, its success without really understanding, like. I, I understand what made it successful. Like I can understand the appeal of having your own. Like, it's like Epic Games seems to think that Steam's success was the like that they had some kind of killer app. That's not the case. That yeah. was never the case. Oh, Attila! Oh, this is good. Uh, this is a really good metaphor. Steam is the galactic age, and Epic is now reaching Iron Age. Yeah, yeah, we're here. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like you're playing. We're playing Age oh, of Empires. Empire. <laughs> or... You're playing Empire Earth. Oh shit! Yeah, you're still, still in there, in like the Copper Age, banging rocks together, while homies walking over you with eighteen meter tall mechs and laser cannons. Yeah, and they're going into space, exploring. And, yeah, shit. we're we're launching we're launching like spy satellites, looking at looking all at all the like Epic Games and you play and. EA Origin, whatever they have now, they're they're we're looking over the spy satellite and they're still with like 
they've got the the witch doctor with his giant mask and he's ooga boogaing around while while they're all all the little dudes are like carrying bundles of copper to the to the thing with a little sled they have to drag because they don't have the wheel yet that's what it's like in the in the digital gaming platform market right now like I understand, like I understand, you can have your own platform doing niche things. Like again, GOG, great example, DRM-free niche titles that aren't normally available on Steam or all that stuff. It could go, co- it could coexist. You know, it could be like, hey, we're always here. You know, if you want to buy games from us, cool, we sweet, we got you. We got some stuff that's not even on Steam and it's DRM-free. Win-win. Epic Games, here, please come to our platform. We'll give you free games, please. Hey, we're the Fortnite guys. Yeah. Would you like to also buy games here? Also, Steam, Scary Monopoly. You know, that's what it just reminds me of, basically. It's like they're doing everything wrong and pissing off the PC gaming market. Or not not pissing off the the gamers specifically, too. They're just... It's just... Because I remember, because it's like... There was supposed to be... I forgot what game it was. It was supposed to release on Steam. They had a Kickstarter and everything. And then they announced they're going to be released exclusively on the Epic Game Store. And it pissed off everyone who pre-ordered, because they were expecting, like, wait, what about my Steam release? Yep. And Fall Guys, you cannot play Fall Guys anymore on Steam. Well, you cannot get it anymore on Steam. Like if you already have it on your uh, on your library, you're good. But it's uh, I I can actually show you. Hold on, we're going to Panda's library here. Jesus Christ, I got a lot of games. Uh, where are you think I would? Yeah, okay. All right, um, I'm just doing this as an example here. You go to the store page. And here we go. Fall Guys is no longer available on the Steam store. You know what it's available on? Epic Game Store. Yep. That pisses me the fuck off because I can still play this. I can still play it. I can. It's still being updated, all that Danny stuff. But they, you know, if you want you yourself to play it, you have to go to the Epic Game Store if, you, if you're on PC. Oh... <sighs> Jesus Christ. I remember people complaining about Battle.net being really... Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, when Battle.net first launched. Yeah. And then, it, and then it kind of was like... And then everyone got like, okay, this is the one-stop shop for Blizzard games and all that dandy stuff. And then we got comfortable and now it's Diablo 4 is on Steam, including Overwatch 2. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you... you you can get Fall Guys on Steam only if you have an old Steam. Yeah, like that. But that's right. it, Google. That's it. That's the only way you can do it. You cannot try to get it as is anymore. You either have to have an old key line run or you already have it. You cannot get it. You know, if you want to buy it or or no, it's free to play now. If you want to download it and add to your library, no, you have to be on the Epic Games Store. But again, it pisses me the fuck off because it was originally on the Steam platform and then and then they took it away. Like, don't do that. You just have it on your platform too and coexist. Like, for God's sakes. It's almost reminds me of the stupidity of fucking crossplay when PlayStation was saying that Fortnite was better played on PlayStation. Even though you could play Fortnite, PC people, Xbox people can play it together and and um and um Oh, you 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 mean whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on. You mean Sony are a bunch of smug assholes? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, and they, yeah. They and they they deliberately made the experience worse. For yeah. people on their platform while everyone else was was having a good time yeah like did it with my like the whole cross play thing like they want to be exclusive i remember seeing an ad for minecraft of microsoft and nintendo joining force and be like you could play with each other no problem yeah i remember that yeah they were fucking that also that. also uh, i gotta give props to fortnite because fortnite kind of proved that you can do it yeah because they they accidentally turned on crossplay with playstation and I it kind of and it it was such a cheeky move and i love it i'm like all right i gotta give it to you there epic games good job but you know i will give credit where credit is due but it's just um but yeah it's, it's just this whole thing of like like oh plan on our platform because it's exclusive well if you're trying to be better than steam have games available on your platform too and don't try to steal away games that people either like again the kickstarter promise being on steam as you know that they put their money towards or you know or it was on steam and then you took it away basically you know you you can't you we're at a we're at a point now where you can't just beat steam at their own game that's yeah. not gonna happen yeah until it's like there are many games uh, that have been removed from steam but if you own it you can still get the game 
uh, on the, you can still download it even on a like re-download it whenever you want. Like I will give Steam that they never pulled a so yeah. Yep. Same thing with me. I got games on my Steam's list that I own forever, basically. Like I own World of Conflict and the expansion pack Soviet Assault. I own the original GTA games on there. Like the only GTA games you can buy on Steam is the definitive edition for three Vice City and San Andreas. Me, I got the original original ones, so I can still play that whenever I want. I think that's a cool fucking thing to do, you know? Like, hey, you know, fucking, fuck yeah, awesome. But it, it just, it's just the stupid notion like Steam being a monopoly on the PC gaming. No, it's not, it's not a monopoly. They're just, they're the biggest market on the PC gaming market. And they're actually do a lot of really cool things to the consumers, including, you know, giving them some awesome perks and, prote and, and pro protection, basically. It's not like they're taking the money and running away with it. No, they're actually making Steam better adding in more products too and just it's becoming like this massive thing where it's like okay hey like i know a game could release on here i'm gonna buy it on here that's a lot of games but yeah um but anyways i think we're gonna be uh is there anything else we can add to this basically like we kind of just said like no steam's not really a fucking you know they're not dicks or assholes about it guys no no <laughs> so this has been the good old man ranting about the last three decades of gaming. Oh my god, Attila. We're not old. Give your balls a tug. We're not old. Like, oh, do you want to be the third old man, Attila? We'll bring you right the fuck in. I can do that. It's our, it's my podcast. I can do whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> but no, it's, um, I, you know, I, I, I don't think this is going to be the last time we see uh, a specific, uh, there's always going to be other digital specific plat uh, digital platforms on PC that will try to do their own thing, but it's like Steam's yeah. always Steam's literally like there, be like, we'll bring, welcome back, you know, welcome, you know, again, like if developers are willing to take a thirty percent cut hit to put on Steam, just because they know that it's a bigger reach, a yep. massive, yeah. uh, like a, it's the cost of a, being on the biggest platform. Yeah, they don't mind, you know, but um. But yeah, uh, Attila's, wait, is Attila even in my Discord? You check. Stand by. Is he going to be our third ranting old man? No, nah, no, we're okay. clear. Okay, we're clear. Okay, good. So, but uh, I think that was a good talk, you know? Wait, uh, also before I go, I got up by 3 a.m., but for consistency, Anubis Bebop is S-tier anime. Uh, you can go ahead and say it is that. An S it is an S-tier anime. To, you know, it to, is. You're going to have to... <laughs> Well, you're gonna have to come up with a convincing it. argument for why it deserves to be in the same league as all those other anime that legitimately changed the medium. Okay. As of which, now we're going on to the board segment where specifically we put in recommendations for anime, which can include live action and hentai, um, and movies and OVAs and all that any stuff. You know. So with this, here's a bit of a sneak peek of our list here. Uh, a lot of great recommendations as tier. Akamagi SS, Neon Genesis, Summon Kalian, Gundam Build Fighters, Dragon Ball Z, naturally. I'll talk about no video, all that dandy stuff. A tier, good amount. B tier, good amount. We C and D tier, not so much, but F tier, just avoid these at all fucking cost. You don't want to watch it. I don't want to watch Just avoid them at all fucking cost, please. I'm, I'm literally telling you just to, just to avoid this. So... As such, now it's time to do our recommendations. And of course, for folks out there, if you have any recommendations to tell us, like, hey, put it on there. Um, the Crampa Panda and still single. Yeah, I know. Uh, but yeah, post it down in the comment box what kind of animes you want to see on there that we might actually put it on there because we watched it ourselves. So, Anubis, what anime are we putting on the list? Uh, that's a good question. It's your podcast. <laughs> Fuck! I'm looking back now, like, I see my Blu-ray collection right there, and I know majority of them, I already have it up there. I already got Cali Viva up and all that shit, I already got Street Fighter, um... Fuck. Uh... I already got Sakura Wars. Fuck me. I already got Devil's a Part-Timer. Do we have Card Captor Sakura on there? I f if we don't, I'm gonna be I, disappointed. Yeah, let, can we see if Card Captor Sakura is on that on this list? Anyways, what's the what's what's the search feature to search for a phrase? Control F. Uh, 
We do not have Card Captor Sakura on there. Wow. Um. We fucked up. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put this on there then. Card Captor Sakura, which another magical girl anime. Um, a great alternative to Sailor Moon because it was doing its own thing basically. Yeah. Um, I want to say. I watched a good amount of it because my sister was really into it, so. I want to say solid B. Card Captain Sakura. High B, low A. Yeah. So I'm, I'm yeah, going to say I, high I, B. I go for that. I'm going to go with the high B card. The, the, what the fuck did we not... What the, how the fuck did we not have Card Captain Sakura? How the... And that anime originally came out in, wow, late 90s. Okay. How the fuck did we not have it up there? Good God. I'm even fucking, I'm even fucking impressed of my, of the lack of, of, of this on there. Holy fucking shit. All right, Anubis, you're, we usually go back and forth with these recommendations too, so. Yes. Uh, Mine is, and I'm. Making sure real quick we don't have this. Yeah, we really do need to go down the list I'm here. Pretty sure we don't have this. The Excel spreadsheet doesn't have this. Mobile suit Zeta Gundam. Ooh, what tier are we gunning for? So I would conservatively put it in high A. Because it really is one of the best Gundam anime. Like it might, it really might just be the top Gundam TV anime of all time. Zeta Gundam. Oof. Zeta Gundam. It's. You know what? I agree. We'll put it in high A. And the only reason is because I can't on the spot come up with a reason why it should be an S tier. If you gave me enough time, I probably could, but just right now, you, you, high A is, is a high, perfect for it. A high, a high A is good pray is good praise enough and stuff like that. Like Yeah. Um Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can. I can get. I can get down with that. No worries. Um, let's see here. If we are, um, do we have memories on there? Do we? No, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think we have memories on there. I'm going to fix that. <laughs> All right. Okay, so for, for those wondering what memories is, it's basically essentially three different anime um, short uh, films wrapped into one movie, basically, each having their own unique story, characters, and all that dandy stuff. And one of the episodes was about a, like a space hall, like a like the space crew finding like this derelict station and all that dandy stuff and investigating it. It's kind of trippy too, and then another story is about this guy just being part of like the war machine, basically. And the last one is this uh, this guy taking a pill and realizing he just became not realizing he just became the uh, worst biological disaster known in history. <laughs> so, um, but uh, but still, uh, for uh, but I do like and enjoy these uh, short anime films, basically. So I want to go solid beats here. Mm. So, which I'm like, oh, I really can't put memories on here. Which uh, the directors were Katsuro Otomo, Koji Miramoto, and Tensai Okamura. So. All right, so B tier. Yeah, so yeah, solid, um, solid B tier. You know. Yeah. You could. Yeah, solid B tier. All right. All right. So, in keeping with the same theme, Mobile Suit Gundam Double Zeta. 
Uh, where are we going? Uh, I'll put this one in. This is a high B or high B. High B remarks, okay. And really mostly because it, it's kind of compared to Zeta, like as a follow up to Zeta, it's kind of a contentious series. There's a lot of people who really like it, and I'm among those people. There's a lot of people who thought like it was a bad tonal shift compared right. to uh compared to Zeta. Really? like yeah total, like totally like went off the rockers and all that danny stuff like so like it, at the risk of like not not spoiling anything but zeta has a really like downer ending like a lot of like a lot of not good things happen in zeta gundam and then it ends okay and then double zeta starts out with oh uh, yeah it's uh Jiro Ashita and the junkyard kids, and they find a they find a mobile suit, and they kind of tool around with it until the until the military finds them, and and like it, it's kind it's kind of silly. Uh, my K Gaz, one of my co-hosts, and on NTR Radio, would like to point out basically the the image of Zeta Gundam, double Zeta Gundam, is bright Noah with a chicken on his head. Where it's literally just uh, this is from this real episode, and they're loading food and chickens into the into the Argama, and one of the chickens flies up and lands on Bright Noah's head, and he freaks out, and that's basically the beginning of Double Zeta, compared to the ending of Zeta Gundam, which was which a whole bunch of awful things happen, and then it just ends. Well, it ain't Gundam unless war crimes happened. Well, uh, well, to be fair, war crimes do happen in, in <laughs> Double Zeta. Like, yeah, we're not getting away it, from the war it, crimes. It ain't a gun this, war this, crimes doesn't this is, Yeah, this is, <laughs> it does get very, very serious, but yeah. it starts out as kind of a, kind of like a... Like a lighthearted, like, like more comedic approach. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah, it got, and Judo, then it... Judo and Junkyard Kids. Yeah, then it got serious and all that Danny stuff. Yeah, and then it gets very serious. Um, we do have some recommendations. Uh, which tier is Demon Slayer? And what do we even have One Piece on the list? I I don't know that we have One Piece on the list. I don't know what where it would go because I haven't watched it. Well, I watched the earlier stuff, but that's it. I haven't watched like anything recent, basically. Uh, Outlaw Star is on the list, definitely. Uh, Muto. Haven't seen it i've heard the name before but i don't remember what exactly it is oh oh yeah i had i yeah i hadn't seen this one i'm looking okay yeah that was uh that was kyoto animation's first real work yeah i'm like i'm, I'm looking at this like oh oh okay hmm. God. um Damn. Um. Yeah. No. I. Um. I mean, I watched Muto was amazingly. Uh, was amazingly animated before it's. Oh, gotcha. It was kind of like released before its time. Uh. Well, I've watched One Piece. I enjoyed it, but it was kind of like one of those things that we went so long that I stopped watching it, and I know if I try to get back into it, it'd be like a really long time for me to get back into it. So also, Aqua. Uh, you're taking a leap. Have a good have a good uh, night out there, buddy. Um, like I want to put One Piece on the list, but it's like one of those things. It's like it's so far ahead that I can't I can't like comment on the recent efforts of it. Basically, you know, right? Like I want like if I were if, and is it the longest running anime? No, no, no. not not by a long shot. No, it, it, but it is a long fucking anime. It is up there, though. Um, even look, I'm even looking for like some shit that I'm like, okay. Um, all right, hold on here. I'm gonna. I, I honestly, I'm not a fan of Demon Slayer. I am not. <laughs> I gave it a three episode watch, and I'm like, that's it. I'm good. You know. Wait, do we? <laughs> I gave it the three episode watch. Um. It's a lot longer than I give most anime. Yeah. The Jesus Christ. Um. 
We already got Dot Hex Sun on there, right? Yeah. We've got Full Metal Panic. I believe so. Yep, we oh, got shit. Sun. The Get Backers. Wow. I remember watching like yeah. a couple random yeah. in between episodes of that. Yeah. Back in the day. I hadn't watched that in so fucking long. God. I remember it being kind of like it was, it was okay. It had its own Jesus Christ the get backers, goddamn. Um Wow. Um Jesus Christ. Because I remember my sister started watching it and then I started watching it after. Um tell you what, I'm gonna throw it up on the list. Why not? Alright. Still I wanna give it an easy B tier. Easy B. Can't argue with that. Yeah. Like from what you remember with the random in-between episodes, you had a good time? I don't remember a single thing about those <laughs> random in-between episodes. I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you. No, like uh but no, I I will put the game. Like, I can I there. remember like the I remember like I don't even remember what it looks like. I just remember like the basic premise of the story is that they get things back. Yeah. Which I could have guessed just by looking at the, <laughs> the, the title name itself of the show. Was, yeah. But I've I've been I've been completely misled by show titles before. Listen. Yeah. The expectation of a show called Kitty Grade and the actual show are completely different things. 100 percent completely diametrically opposed to one another. You would not expect a show named Kitty Grade to be what the show of Kitty Grade actually is. So it, it, it really, it's really lucky that the show, the, the show named Get Backers is about thing, guys who get things back because it could really be anything. I had another one I just reminded myself of, so well, I'll wait for your recommendations. Yeah. The, uh, my hero, uh, my hero. I mean, my hero academia is still going on. I've only watched the first two seasons, but that's it. So, but um, we don't have Gundam MS Igloo on here, do we? I don't think so. Uh, I'll so I'll throw the first MS Igloo up uh, under B tier. And for for reference, I'm saying the first MS Igloo, as in the first three episodes, and then the three episodes that followed that. Because there's the Hidden One Year War, and there's the the other one that's uh. in the same series but has a different title. Apocalypse 0079 is the other one. So the Hidden One Year War and Apocalypse 0079, both of them are MS Igloo, and I'm saying B tier for them. All right, B tier for them. Okay. I got a good one. All right. And, and pure comedy, pure other shenanigans. The only, you do not take this anime seriously for whatever reason whatsoever. Please turn off all logic and all that stuff. The anime in question is... I just had the title. Camarade High School. Cromarty High School. Cromarty High School, yep. For some reason, I for some reason I knew you were going to recommend that. And that's not a... That's not, like, me being cheeky. That's, like... Because, like, I saw... I saw a screenshot or, like, a... A clip from Cromartie High School earlier today, and because I, I was forgetting <laughs> the character's name, yep. and I was like, "Oh, it's that robot kid from Cromartie High School. What's his name? It's Mekazawa." Yep. <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, okay, yeah." I I that's another show that I watched a couple episodes of. That's one from the beginning because I knew about it ahead of time. I'd seen ads for it. Yeah. The um, yeah the there was a lot of. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of references they put in there too of like other things like um god what was the guy's name um yeah freddy Ob <laughs> freddy was obviously 
It was only reference to Freddie Mercury, basically. Mustache, yep. shirtless, all that dang stuff. It's literally just like like Shenado and shenanigans take over, basically. And that's what you fucking get. And it's just fucking and there is a live action out there. I shit you not. There is a live action thing out there too. So uh take that information what you will. <laughs> but yeah, I I I'll put it up an easy B tier for it because it just got some good laughs with it. So Easy B. Ooh. Uh, I'd be up for it. Ooh. Cromarty High School. Oh my god. Yes. Tentacle? Yes. Yes. Yes to all of this. I'll just have to wait for Anubis' turn, naturally. We're putting a lot of Bs in. So I have to research anime that I actually disliked, which is going to be interesting for the next, for episode 10. That's, it, it's, it's funny because. Most of the anime that I could say I like disliked, I don't quite remember. That's what I kind of have to do too. Actually, I wonder if we have this one on the list. We're just going through shit right now and all that any stuff. It's it's really interesting because it's like we've been watching this for so fucking long. It's like yeah, we're adding another thing on the list here. Okay, so Flowers of Evil. Ooh. And I remember back when this came out, and it was a real big deal, particularly because everyone like everyone knew the like directorial decision that was made. But basically, they used a uh, they used was basically a rotoscoping technique to do all the visuals, mm -hmm. and it made the entire anime look janky is a good word for it. But it it was clear that the way the visuals were done didn't do the uh, didn't do the the story justice and it made it look kind of like a mockery of itself. So I'm, I'm going to say easy D tier. Cause the story, the story has something to it, but everything else, all the other elements ruin it for me. So ex story wise, had, there was something there, but execution of it entirely just kind of, would you even, really, would you what even it go is, is they, they, they did an active disservice to the story that the anime was trying to tell. Would you say the live action would be better to watch at this point? Probably, yes. Without without having seen it, just knowing the story, having read a little bit of the manga, and yep. having seen what I've seen of the anime, probably, yes, it would make a better live action series and it would make a better manga, at least better than what the anime ended up being. Right. I'm actually going to be putting something in C tier. Um, I don't think we have this Desert Punk. Desert Punk. I don't think we have this. I haven't watched that in a long fucking time, but it was. Wait a second. Okay. No. That. That. Yep. Yep. We don't. Okay. Yeah. It, it's like one of those things where it's like. It wasn't the best, but it wasn't the worst type thing. Again, it's it's and because i remember this is another anime i watched a few episodes of from the beginning yeah and like i this is one that i had really liked at the time but probably would not particularly bother yeah. going back and watching it it's kind of like a one time one time watch it was going for a comedic angle and stuff like that guy guy was a bounty hunter in like a post-apocalyptic desert of japan what his weakness is women. Shenanigans abound. But uh, I'm just saying C tier. It's 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 not the worst. I gave it a good time watch. Cool. Let it let it lay there. <laughs> like I, the one watch was good enough to suffice for me. So yeah. I, I I will I will I, I would let it lay there, no worries. God damn it, Panda, stop cheating. I'm wasn't I'm Desert Punk, okay? That wasn't no one said Desert Punk. I'm just saying. No one. It's 
surprised you hadn't mentioned Sonic X. I, for some reason, I scarcely consider that an anime, which is weird because it definitely is. Really? <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't register in my head that way. Oh. Well, it's like, like, like back in the day, I didn't know Speed Racer was an anime. Like, if you if you told me I was an anime, I would one, I would have been like six, so I wouldn't have understood what you were saying, or I wouldn't oh, have understood gotcha. the terminology. Yeah. But like, it, it, it's it's just a a weird offbeat cartoon. Because like every other Sonic cartoon has been a Western production. So like a Sonic X, oh, it's a Sonic cartoon. It, it doesn't it doesn't immediately register as an anime to me. Gotcha. But it is. Also, I haven't watched a whole lot of Sonic X. I've probably read more of the Sonic Archie comic than than how much of Sonic X I've actually watched. Okay. Do we have this one? Give me a second. We don't. As a matter of fact, do we have this one? That's the wrong hockey. Do we have this one? We're going through the list here. Damn, we don't have that one either. I'll put it on the list. Like, if you're saying we don't have it either, like, put it on the list. It's right there. This is there for a reason. Hang on, I can't just choose stuff willy willy nilly to put on the list. Okay. That's not how I operate, Panda. All right. Also, like it has to be something that that I can say something to. Actually, do we have this one on the list? This is this is. If we don't, this is going to be fun. Kind of. Yeah. Okay. Cat shit one. I'm sorry. <laughs> Cat shit one. You've watched this one, Panda. You oh have my! Both yeah, this yeah, yep, yep, yep. The bunny, the bunny rabbits and shit. All tactical. Yes. Okay, where are we putting it? Where are we putting, putting it? it in, I'm putting it in C tier, and the reason it's C tier and not B tier is because there's only one episode. I'll accept that. I will accept that. They, they, they could have had more. I could have had more. They should have had more. There's a whole manga. Oh, yeah, I see it here. Holy shit, yeah. God damn. You know what? I'm going to add something else and see. I haven't seen this in a while, but it's an, it's an oldie, but a fucking goodie. Okay. You ready? All right. All right. Uh, Wicked City. That one I've heard of, but haven't seen. It is crazy. <laughs> it's one of those horror animes. It's like, the fuck is going on here? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I think at one point, like, this demon... It, it, it's just... It's just really weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I, I remember very certain scenes very vividly, and it's just like, yeah, it's got the horror aspect down to a fucking <laughs> tooth. But it's oh, God. Hold on here. I'm, I'm trying to. Yeah, that's the fucking that's the fucking thing I'm remembering. Yeah, just yeah, like yeah, it's weird. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. It's it's got like a horror aspect, sex and all that Danny stuff. This woman absorbing this guy through her body as a meal. It, it's just it. It's hey, the let, 1980s. Let, let me. Yeah, I, I was about to say this sounds like an 80s OVA. Th this is an 80s OVA through and through. No, no. Oh wow, it did, man. Okay, but through and through. So yeah, we're we're, we're gonna yeah we're going to. Um, yeah, I'm gonna add it there in C tier. It's one of those things. Okay, turn off your fucking brain and enjoy the roller coaster. It's weird through and through.
I'm actually kind of happy we're adding stuff to the C tier list. I'm not gonna, not even gonna lie. I'm actually kind of happy we are. <laughs> because I'm just reminding myself, like, man, I haven't seen that anime in so fucking long. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. <sighs> yeah, you you recommending Wicked City, the '80s OVA, just reminded me of another 80s ova that right. i think is probably closer to an a or a b tier all right what is that it's megazone 2 3 you know about this one this is the one where it's the this kid finds this experimental motorcycle that transforms into a mech <laughs> and then he he discovers that like it looks like they live in like Japan in the 1980s. But really they're in a giant spaceship traveling through space that it, the like the environment inside the spaceship is Japan in the 1980s and nobody knows that they're in a giant spaceship. Hmm. And they need to unravel the mystery and the conspiracy around the fact that they're in a giant spaceship and these fucking aliens are attacking and the and then what what happened to the earth and all that. And it's it's a wild ride. It's it's Kinda definitely like, one of those '80s OVAs, and it re, it's a it's a well remembered classic. So take like Big O, but add in Macross. Yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, because they're on a spaceship, but they have no, they don't remember how they got there, or what's going on. They're just kind of like living life with robots. That's a really good event. Okay, where are we putting this shit? All right. Let's uh, go. Put it in B tier. B tier? Okay. Because that's that, like that's what it kind of reminds me of. I'm like, that's like big O with like Macross in it. <laughs> like, as far as themes go, it's yeah. That, that, that's that's what it's that's what I'm getting that's what I'm like getting at near. I've already got my next one. You you, you already got your next one? God damn. Uh, Somehow, let's... listen, miracles can happen. <laughs> Jesus Christ, they can happen once at least. Um, we'll do one last one for each of us, and then we're good. Um, cool. shit, I want to do this, but I I haven't seen the original. I've seen the newer one. Um, yeah, maybe. Y'all think y'all think that Panda will have a list here ready to fuck? No, I don't. I don't have a fucking list. Don't even try. Don't even try. Um. You know what? Um. Okay, so this is going to be an interesting suggestion because technically, there were other versions of this. Okay. I've never seen the original, but I've seen the newer updated one. Okay. Uh, Appleseed. I've seen the 3D film. I haven't seen the original anime. Mm -hmm. So. Which now makes me want to watch the original anime just to see kind of like, okay, what, what the fuck did I miss? Right. Um. So what's what's the subtitle of the one you watched, or is is it just called it, Appleseed? Same, Appleseed, yeah, it's the same title, same, really? it's like, same thing. Um, but yeah, there was a nineteen eighties one original, and then there was a two thousand four three D animation one. So I mean, I kind of want to give it a C tier. High C, low B. Okay. But that's really it. <laughs> yeah. Apple C 2004. Yeah, I have to, I have to, yeah, I have to specifically put that in there too, 2004 version. Because I, I kind of want to watch the 1980s one just to kind of see what I've missed out on. Hmm. All right, Anubis, last recommendation of the night. Go. Okay. Uh, this is coming from... Yeah, it's from Tentacle Honey in the chat. 
Okay. Right? This is keep your hands off Azokin. Oh, all right. Tentacle Hunter, you first off. Thank you for this exertion. Keep your hands off what? Azokin. E I Z O U K E N. Hands off Azokin. I I think it's a con- I think it's a contender for A AT- for A tier, quite honestly. Oh, I I've seen I've this, this, Okay. Yes, yeah, so like this is a uh, the it's really what it is is a long form uh metaphor for the way the anime industry works. Okay. But it it, it does that in its very creative way and really it's one of the most visually creative anime I've ever seen. As it, like just as far as the whole presentation goes like it right. switches it switches art styles it switches it, like it it's it, it has this sort of like the default art style of the characters and stuff is like this ed ed netty type of art style but kind of yeah i'm seeing it yeah yeah like, kind, but kind of animated in the style of maybe a studio studio trigger show yeah it's a very it's a very unique show i haven't really seen a whole lot like it all right but yeah i i would definitely put it in a tier just based off his presentation based off of its uh based off of its characters uh sayaka sayaka kanamori is my spirit animal in in an anime character form okay He's all business like if, if you watch the show and you'll definitely see what i'm talking about and you need to watch like highlight clips of Cam Holt and shit like that. And you see what I'm talking about. Like you remind me of Cam Holt, the newest. Yeah. So like it's so definitely a contender. And even even as a as a like metaphor for the anime industry, it's a very like it's very accurate and very fair based mm. on how the industry actually works and the realities of it. All right. Like it it doesn't try to it doesn't try to go too melodramatic. It doesn't like try to portray any particular side as as a particular victim. It's just say, this is how this is the reality of how this works and what we need to do in order to in order to make this whole thing work. All right, and I think that would be it for today. Now, oh, don't want to play that now. Uh, first and foremost, um. That is the end of our segment and basically the end of the show. Yeah, we made some good time around the time. So just a heads up on um, the podcast. I aim it to be around an hour and 30 minutes. It is going to be live bi-weekly on Twitch. And if you missed out on today, no worries. It's going to be uploaded on my YouTube channel uh, next upcoming uh, weekend. So expect that to be on there. And you can check out all other our previous uh, episodes as well. But uh, first and foremost, thank you everyone for joining in. And thank you for coming in as well. Thanks for having me. And for everyone else out there, again, we are going to have, hopefully, be more well-prepared. I'm definitely going to have to prepare an anime list for next week, dude. I'm definitely going to have to prepare one. I'm going to have to start watching. I we're, we're, never we're, prepare an anime yeah, list. Yeah, yeah, like, we're saying we're preparing. <laughs> we're not. That much, in, you know, that, that much is clear that I yeah. never do that. Yeah, but, uh, but with that here, thank you all so much for your suggestions. But the stream will not be over because we got some more to come. But for this episode, it is. Thank you. Stay geeky, my friends.